قال لي هذا المسؤول أنا أريد أن أنهي هذه القضية فهي أخذت وقت أكثر من اللازم فأنا أعمل معك دي الصفقة أنت تقول أنت من القاعدة ثم نحن آه نوديك إلى المطار ترجع إلى ألمانيا ممنوع أن تبقى في آه مكادوني El Masri says he refused the deal offered, and so the CIA took over. On January 23, 2004, they flew him to Afghanistan, to a prison called the Salt Pit. Some months later, the CIA realized they had the wrong man. Despite this, they held him for another two months before releasing him in May. El Masri was flown to Albania and then driven to a remote area by the borders of Serbia and Macedonia, where one of his captors released him. I بعد ما مشيت حوالي 300 متر كان في لفة إلى اليسار ما تستطيع تشوف إيش في وراء ففوجئت بثلاث مسلحين بلباس عسكري فطلب مني جواز السفر أعطيته جواز السفر قال لي أنت ما عليه ختم دخول ثم أنت شكلك إرهابي El Masri eventually made it back to Germany, where he is attempting to resume a normal life. Back in Germany, Khaled El Masri sought recompense for his ordeal. When I was completely naked. The American Civil Liberties Union lodged a lawsuit in his name in the United States. We regret that we have to bring this lawsuit to force our government to live up to American values. But the Bush administration has shown itself incapable of demanding accountability at the highest levels of our government. That absence of accountability has led to a culture of impunity in the Bush administration. However, the U.S. judge dismissed the lawsuit, saying it would risk national security by exposing CIA activities vital to the U.S. war on terrorism. Meanwhile, in Canada, where we visited, a parliamentary inquiry has been investigating the actions of Canadian officials in relation to Maha Arar's ordeal in Syria. As Mr. Arar will tell you, uh, he is currently suing the, the Canadian government and a whole series of Canadian officials. He's also suing the American government and a whole series of American officials in the United States. So I think he, he is taking them to court. And one of them is John Cash. Yeah, Arar's lawyer in the United States and, and so hopes this I, case I will prove more successful than her previous lawsuits against the U.S. administration. Maybe there will be people in the world that will try and stop us. I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's hard to, to think that all, all, all of our effort here is, I, I, I lose faith that it's doing anything. In America's capital, U.S. senators have challenged the Bush administration to define and limit interrogation techniques that American personnel may use against terrorism suspects. Republican Senator John McCain has been a leading campaigner against torture. He himself was a former POW who was tortured during captivity in the Vietnam War. Abuse of prisoner harms not helps us in the war on terror. Others who have been on the intelligence front line of that war on terror are also speaking out against the practice of extraordinary rendition. But I just don't like the lack of due process and I don't like people being sent in place where they, and forget about physical torture. I'm just talking about duress, being held incommunicado, with no representation, They've disappeared out the face of the earth. I, I don't like it as a policy. That's all. 
critics say that abusive interrogation tactics produce bad intelligence and undermine the values Americans hold dear. Even Michael Scheuer, the former CIA counterterrorism expert, today has doubts about the effectiveness of the program of extraordinary rendition, which he helped establish. There is no way we can arrest all of these people. There's too many of them and their numbers are growing. So the, the danger is that Americans think because we are arresting these people, we're winning. They're safer because we arrest them, but there's always someone to take their place. Until recently, the program of extraordinary rendition still appeared to be in practice. In November 2005, this specially chartered plane landed in Reykjavik, Iceland. Its identity is given away by this registration number as one of the planes used by the CIA to transport suspects around the world. American media reports have traced the plane as belonging to a front company used by the CIA. This time, some intrepid journalists were on hand to catch the plane and its crew on film. Are you stopping here in Iceland? Gentlemen, will you be staying here in Iceland? For a long time or just overnight? Okay. Where are you heading? Back to the, where did you come from? Where in Europe? Scotland. Scotland. Did you stay there for many days? Former detainees have emerged from a nightmarish world into which they had been thrown on the basis of suspicion or even mistakes. The U.S. administration continues to detain people it suspects of terrorism with neither charge nor trial. Some are held in special detention centers such as here at Guantanamo Bay, others have been transported to Arab prisons, and some have been taken to Afghanistan and perhaps other countries too. The great danger is that there will be a terrible reckoning, a reckoning for which we all may pay. حتروح من جيل لجيل والناس حتضل تحكيها. فهذا شو بيولد؟ بيولد كره عند المسلمين انه عم يساوون المسلمين وكرهت كره لامريكا فعلين انت بدك شيء تقول تقول لهم المسلمين نحن حننقصكم مين حيصدق؟ فهذا هو الخساره الكبرى لامريكا. امريكا بظني خسرت خسرت كثير. And I do think that over time the real danger for America in the Islamic world is right now our foreign policies and their impact are hated very much by often huge majorities in, in Islamic and Muslim countries. But Americans aren't hated as Americans. And I think the danger in things like taking people to Egypt or Guantanamo Bay or what happened at Abu Ghraib is that Muslims begin to hate Americans for being Americans. Angry because I'm all over, back again, afraid of living, afraid that something will go wrong, afraid that you will, you know, you will not be treated justly, afraid, you know, just you're af I'm afraid. I'm afraid, uh, just like, you know, and I look at it and I have, you know, it's just, you know, you're back to square one. You were afraid back then, you leave your country, you come here, you're afraid all over again. It just, just makes me angry. Yeah. Look, I don't like these people, in the sense. I don't want these people to hurt me or anybody else that I know of. But I think there's a better way of handling those that, that, that come into our custody. I'm all for proactive, I'm all for very robust intelligence. I'm all for all that, believe me. I'm not, I want you to think that I'm, I'm sitting here telling you that I think that, uh, that we shouldn't do that. I really do. I just think that we ought to think long and hard about allowing people to be taken at some part in the world and brought to countries to be subjected to torture or duress. There's a consequence for that, 
and we will pay a price. Guaranteed.